So uh, we had a uh, detention hearing today in the matter of the two juveniles uh, for the assault at the Great Frederick Fair. Uh, they both are being continued to be held in detention pending their uh, juvenile hearing, which is set for the next uh, in about 30 days. So uh, that's the only thing that happened today in trial. Um, uh, you know, again, they're both charged as juveniles at this time. I'm going to address that shortly about uh, whether they could be uh, charged as adults. Um, but today, uh, Judge Solt held the Uh, so we are going to pursue that at a later time, but we're not going to piecemeal our charges. Uh, we're still trying to figure out who else was involved, uh, whether they were acting in concert, uh, and we're going to make one comprehensive charging decision with regard to all juveniles charged or uncharged at this time. Um, but I can tell you at this point in time that it does appear that manslaughter charges are appropriate in this particular case. Uh, no, that would be for uh, the 15-year-old um, at this point in time. Again, unless we believe that there was some sort of a conspiracy that existed, uh, that there was some sort of a plan that occurred for this to happen. Um, uh, but at this point in time, it looks like the assault uh, was at the hands of just the one individual, uh, at least the, the deadly assault. So um, juvenile versus adult. There's been a lot of people on the social media uh, wanting them to be tried as uh, adults. Uh, I can tell you that I don't make the law. I just prosecute people who break it. Okay, so uh, the law does not permit state's attorney's offices across the state of Maryland to charge a juvenile as an adult, okay, at 15 with manslaughter, with second degree murder, with first degree assault. Okay, so let me make that clear. 15-year-olds in the state of Maryland do not get charged as adults for even second-degree murder. They have to be 16. As you heard upstairs in the, in the hearing, this young man was just turned 15. I cannot cho charge him as an adult. Now, there is a process in Maryland where we can waive him in to the adult system. Okay, it's called just that, a waiver hearing. And so we're going to take a look at what facts uh, are revealed and we are going to make a decision about whether we are going to seek a waiver with regard to the young man who uh, who unfortunately put this man to death. So um, again, the other individual is age 16. He's charged at this point in time with second degree assault. Again, that is not a, uh, a charge that is automatically adult jurisdiction. And so right now he is going to continue in the juvenile system. We will make a decision as well about whether to waive him into the adult system. Uh, any questions on juvenile versus adult? Yes. Go ahead. Any? What, what did the victim say to the teenagers when he declined to give them a job? Uh, we don't have that information at, that time, at this time. We're still allowing the detectives with the sheriff's office to do their investigation to see what transpired between the two. Um, but I don't have that information at this time. In court, there was a description. Yep. In court, your no, that's okay. And thank you for that, because uh, I can't talk about anything else unless it was to told, told in the public record. So as you heard in court, uh, this was over him asking him for a dollar bill. Now, obviously, there was some degree of dialogue that occurred after that, and it was negative dialogue. Who said what? We do not know at this point in time. We're gonna, we asked the detectives that. They're interviewing who they can. 
They're asking for people to come forward if they overheard that conversation, if it in fact occurred. Um, but we have no information whatsoever that this was about a knockout game. This was all over a couple of kids asking this man for a dollar, and there was something that broke bad after that. That's correct. That's correct. So what happened was the juveniles asked this man for a dollar. Uh, there was some sort of dialogue that ensued after that uh, that made it uh, uh, a negative situation. Um, it, there was a punch that was delivered to the back of the head by the 16-year-old. At that point in time, there was a number of minutes that, that elapsed after that, at which point in time you all saw the video. The younger 15-year-old comes flying through lands a deadly blow to the victim, unfortunately. Uh, the victim dies the following afternoon at approximately 4 p.m. You did not mention any um, racial motive in there. You didn't mention any sort of hate crime aspect to this. Right. Uh, I, I know there's been some questions about whether this is a hate crime. Spitting on someone is not a hate crime. Maryland law is extremely specific about what constitutes a hate crime. It has to be based upon someone's race, national origin, ethnicity, uh, sexual orientation, uh, religion, or age or disability or homelessness. So uh, we've asked that question to the police. Was that a basis for this assault? Uh, right now, uh, what we know is it was over a dollar bill. Uh, it wasn't over race. But again, that's a question we have as well. So we're going to pursue that. If the facts warrant uh, a charge of a, of a hate crime, we'll charge it. If they don't, then we're not going to try to chase something that doesn't exist. Do you know how many guys are in an unprovoked tap? Pardon? We have, we have no information that this was a provoked attack. Uh, we know there was some sort of a dialogue with regard to the dollar bill, but it could have been, it could have been you know, uh, just simple dialogue. So, uh, but to date, this was a completely unprovoked attack. There is nothing that has come to light thus far about provocation um, uh, or about the victim stating anything that would have provoked the incident. Uh, yes, more people could be facing charges. If we believe that they were acting in concert, that this blow was delivered uh, by uh, those acting in concert with each other, then there could be someone else who would be charged with conspiracy to commit this assault. Uh, but I think there's been a lot of confusion. There was another unrelated incident that occurred at the fair regarding a large group of individuals. It had nothing to do with this assault whatsoever. It was a completely separate incident that occurred on the other side of the midway. We do not have a cause of death yet for the victim. We've, we are seeking the autopsy, um, and uh, we'll make that available when the time comes. As far as a case like this, you hear the parents standing up there and saying, my son is a good kid, he's not violent, he made a mistake, and they're trying to make it seem like Look, I, you know, I've been doing this for close to 30 years. There's plenty of times where good people make bad decisions. But when they result in somebody's death, you get punished. That's just it's that simple. What about the age? How, how challenging does that make it for you? Well, obviously, that's a factor in the extent of punishment. Um, if somebody's got a, 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 an extensive criminal history and they're young, they get punished more harshly than somebody who doesn't have an extensive criminal history. If somebody's older and has no criminal history, perhaps they don't get punished as harshly. So, I mean, punishment's ultimately up to a judge. Uh, but as far as we're concerned, a homicide occurred, as we talked about. It wasn't a premeditated homicide. Doesn't appear at this point in time to be a specific intent to kill homicide, but a, but a person's dead. And so uh, uh, our job is to hold them accountable. And I think that the public would want someone punished for causing someone else's death in even a reckless manner. Um, right. There's a narrative. There's a lot of narratives that are running around back and forth. Social media. Right. This evil thing out there now. Sure. What do you tell this community? What do you tell this community now that's jumping at the this way or this way? You know, unfortunately, they have to put their trust in us. 
Okay, we've been doing it for a long time. We have an excellent team of professionals. Okay, this is not our first punch case resulting in a death. Uh, matter of fact, we have one coming through uh, that we're probably going to do some press release on in the following week that occurred, that a man died four months after an assault occurred. So uh, we do this. We know what the law is. I know what you think the law is, but we know what the law is. So, for example, everybody demanding that they be charged as an adult. The law does not permit these juveniles to be charged as an adult. Everyone demanding that this is a hate crime. Spitting on someone in Maryland is not a hate crime. Killing someone, assaulting someone because they're white or black, Asian or Hispanic, old, disabled, homeless, that's a hate crime. If those facts exist in this particular case, they'll get charged with a hate crime. If they don't exist, they're not getting charged. So, uh, you know, I know they're upset about it, um, but there is this thing called the criminal justice system, and it's set up to answer questions and deliver, in the end, justice for the victim and, quite frankly, for the defendants and the respondents in this case. Mm -hmm. That's another issue because a lot of people wonder about safety and security right. at the bay. Right. So what do you say to them too as well as coming to, to something here in Frederick County? Right. Well, we've never had anything of this magnitude happen at the fair. So I'd ask them to kind of take a look historically at what happens and doesn't happen. But I can tell you I was a former prosecutor in Baltimore City many, many years ago. When you get large populations of people in any place, concerts, fairs, what events, assaults happen. It just, it, it, it's just, unfortunately, it's human nature. Somebody says something that, that provokes someone, uh, someone does something, uh, you know, unprovoked, you know, unprovoked um, and assaults occur. Unfortunately, this was a deadly blow, and the man died. Um, so, obviously, the Great Frederick Fair is going to have their hands. I mean, I know there's been a lot of outcry about uh, barring uh, uh, unattended juveniles from the fair. Not my job. Uh, whether they want to do that or not, it's totally up to them. Um, so, I've had four, I got four kids. I've had them attend the fair without me. Nothing happened, thank the Lord. But, uh, you know, that's a policy that they're going to they're gonna have to figure out themselves. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, I think uh, Laura Will, Chief of Juvenile, made, made the point fairly clearly on the record in there. Uh, no, these aren't juveniles with extensive criminal history. They're not. I'm not going to try to make them out to be. Uh, they are who they are. They, they have a history who they have. Their family is who it is. The uh, judge is going to take a look at all those criteria, uh, and that's what the judge did. Uh, she made a decision to hold him for the next 30 days, uh, and she'll make a decision at some point in time about, uh, about guilt, about innocence, about sentencing, uh, about punishment. Uh, ultimately, that's what judges do. It's our job just to make sure uh, that the rights of everyone involved, including the respondents and the defendants, uh, 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 are, are adhered to and the victim's rights and that justice is done. And ultimately that means that we're going to gather all the facts. Uh, that's what the detectives are about. They're going to gather all the facts. They're going to prevent it, present it to us. We're going to make a charging decision based on those facts alone, not based on social media, not based on what the society wants, but what the law provides. If society wants something different, they need to call their legislator and have the law changed. Okay. If they want 15 year olds to be charged as adults, for first degree assault, they need to go down to Annapolis and get the law changed. That's not my job. So, um, you know, we're just going to do our job. Uh, we're going to see justice is done. Uh, and that's all, all, all we can do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of simplifying, um, we can say they're charged as juveniles right now, but, but they're the state's attorney Wait. Uh, that they yeah. could be uh, prosecuted as a